What's up, YouTube? This is Matthew, and I'm back here with you today. I'm going to be talking about a package uh, that I received in the mail. It was a purchase uh, off of eBay, um, and it was, and I was completely uh, scammed on this. Uh, it's not at that big of a loss money-wise, but I'm doing this video as a heads up for younger collectors out there, really for anybody of any age, but especially younger collectors, because the way this seller did me here. And it's my own fault because I'm an experienced collector as well as a dealer, and I know better than to bid on some kind of crap like this anyway. But the situation that happened in, and it's easy to happen to anybody, even somebody that's been buy, sell, and trade for years like me. And I don't want to see, you know, I hate seeing or thinking about young kids getting ripped off. And I'll tell you why. I can remember when I was growing up, I started collecting at age five years old. And I remember the only thing I had to add to try and add to my collect collection growing up was my allowance money. Okay, nowadays kids, a lot of kids get money for allowance or for gifts uh, added to their PayPal account. And they can go on sites like eBay and shop. And a lot of young collectors do that. They're, they're on eBay shopping, looking to add nice cards to their collection. And they're using their allowance or, you know, money they have on PayPal that was given to them by family, whatever. All right. I'm really glad that I got screwed over on this lot and not some little, uh, you know, 10, 12 year old kid using his PayPal money from his parents or, you know, 13, 15 year old kid uh, trying to buy something on eBay with his allowance money that his parents let him have and him getting ripped off because of what the seller was doing. OK, now I'm going to tell you what the seller did to me. All right. Last week, last Monday. I'm out with a friend at the mall shop that we've been shopping, and I'm waiting outside of a store in the mall on my friend who is inside shopping, and I'm sitting on a bench, and I decide to get on my smartphone, and I'm, you know, I click on the eBay, and I'm looking at auctions ending in the near, you know, future, uh, basically, you know, sports cards, lots is what I usually look at, lot deals. I come across this little five-card lot uh, deal that said Derek Jeter. Uh, tops rookie card lot two rookies uh, slash premium inserts all right that caught my eye as well as the fact that um, it only was like sitting at a dollar 19 bid at that time with uh, 75 cents shipping and you know that's less than two bucks and I, that caught my eye that and the rookie so I, I click on you know on the item it comes up the first thing I noticed was the picture now, I'm holding these five cards exactly how they were in the picture, okay? The, the seller had taken one photograph. He had these cards laying like on a, on a table or something or on a counter, laid out like this. Now, in the pit, he only had one picture, one picture, and that's a dead warning sign, but the auction was ending in like, three minutes and 20 some seconds when I found it. All right, I pull up the picture to zoom in as much as I can and I can see this, okay? I can see this right here and that right there I knew, that's what 1993 Topps Dirt Jeter rookie card looks like. Right here you can see in the background right there, 1992 Topps draft pick card and he's got it listed in the title, two rookies i go down and read the item description next okay he's got it listed right in the item description to 1993 tops Derek jeter rookie cards as well as several premium inserts now right off the bat i knew that this card was a base card standard base Derek jeter i can't really see what any of these other cards are OK, but I can see enough of this and this, the way he had it in the picture, the top of that draft pick, this right here, seeing the corner of Dirk Jeter. And I'm like, OK, there's two tops rookies in there. Now, first of all, these tops rookies of Dirk Jeter in raw condition, ungraded. They're only worth a cut. You know, they're, they're not really worth. I don't care what you say a book says the value of them are. You can get on eBay and look up completed listings you know items that sold recently and type in 1993 Dirk Jeter card number 90 whatever it is 
and you will see that in raw condition, ungraded, these cards sell for a couple of bucks all the time. Okay, even in near mint to mint condition, ungraded raw dirt jitter rookie card sells for a couple of bucks. Now the tops gold sells for a heck of a lot more, even in raw condition because they're more rare, harder to find. But I didn't care. This auction is sitting at a dollar nineteen plus seventy five cent shipping. Two rookies, Jeter rookies, and whatever else. The reason that I decided to bid, though, there was only a limited amount of time, and I'm in a, a several. I'm in several Facebook groups, buy, sell, and trade, sports cards. But I, there's one group I'm in. There's this guy. He buys like everything Derek Jeter. I mean everything. He hoards Derek Jeter cards. Okay, anything anybody will post that he can get at a good buy, he will buy. And he doesn't care. He even you know comments. He doesn't care if he's got a thousand of the same card already. He collects only Dirk Jeter and select few other Yankee players. So I have seen this guy say that he'll buy any and all Dirk Jeter rookies, pay top price. Okay. And I've seen him, the, the tops, I've seen him buy like 30 at one time off of, off of other sellers. So I'm thinking, like I'm always thinking, quick turnaround. Okay, I'm thinking if I get if I bid on this and get this for like just a hair over a couple of dollars, uh, regardless of what these other cards are, if it's got two Dirk Jeter rookies, I can message him, send him the pitch a picture of the cards as soon as I get them, and flip these things by just simply I get them in the mail. I mess take a picture, message him, tell him to make me an offer. He makes me an offer on the whole lot, and then I put them in a new envelope, mail them right off to him because he's bought things from me before. And I make a quick, you know, four or five buck profit, maybe, you know, but plus, you know, this guy looks for stuff for me, too, that I'm looking for, that I collect for my own personal collection. So it's kind of a, you know, helping a, helping a buddy out. But anyway, long story short, there, by the time I read the item description and I've looked at this photo that is showing me only that, basically, basically all I'm seeing, honestly, in the picture is this. There's no other picture. There's no pictures of each card laid out by theirself, which is something all sellers should have the decency to do. And there is no picture of the backs of the cards. I know that one of these Dirk Jeter rookie cards, I can sell to that guy for a couple of bucks as long as it's got no creases and it's in near mint shape. All right. So two of them's four bucks. So I bid two twenty five. I put. I remember I typed in my maximum bid two twenty five. All right. I ended up getting. It seemed like the bid went to 127 or 126 or something like that. And the auction ends. And I win this lot, though, for $1.26 plus 75 cents shipping. Okay? $2.01 is what I got in this little lot here. So I'm thinking when I get these things, um, I'm going to message him and see this. What we do in these groups is we pay friends and family through PayPal when we buy something from each other. So there's no eBay or PayPal fees. I make a lot more money selling through Facebook groups than I ever do on eBay anymore because I don't list as much on eBay as I do sell through these Facebook groups because I get out of PayPal and eBay fees. We, we do friends and family and boom, we don't have to pay all these high price fees that add up and take away your profit. So on a lot like that, I'm thinking, great, I got it for $2 and a penny. I'm going to make you know, three or four bucks just as just simply by getting the cards in, messaging the guy, telling him, hey, give me like, you know, seven bucks and I'll ship this out to you. Two Jeter rookies, three, three or four other inserts. He pays me or he makes me a counter offer, but I make a few quick bucks and all I got to do is throw them right back in another envelope, send them right back out the door to him. OK, and stuff like that. I do that all the time. So I'm not out a lot of money, but it's just a fact this guy ripped me off. And how did he rip me off? I'll show you. I get these cards, this envelope, in the mail today. Now, I was almost wondering why it hadn't come yet because I've had items that I bought like Tuesday and Wednesday come in the mail before this. And I bought this on last Monday. And I paid with PayPal like minutes after the auction ended, okay? So he got his money instantly, okay? And I'm starting to think, what if this, this guy might not send it because he might be pissed that his little lot didn't get but a couple of bucks and he, you know, and he's wanting more. Maybe that was the case and he decided to screw me on the cards. Or maybe this was what was really in the picture. And that's what I believe. This is what was really in the picture. This is how he had it displayed. Kids, beware of this. 
Now, I did this, and I, it's my own stupidity, and I did it with an auction that was ending in like three minutes, okay? But if you are looking at something online that's buy it now, whatever. If it's got a lot of time left, if you see something that's only got one photo, and the main cards that are in the description are hardly able to be seen, message the seller. Ask to see photos of each card. If the seller is being up front and real, he'll do it, okay? He'll send you a real picture. I would, okay? I mean, if I had put this up for one thing, I would have put pictures with the cards laid out showing every single card front and back, okay? That's how I list auctions on eBay. Most other sellers do that are legitimate, okay? But this guy had this one picture, and this is my own fault. So, kids, this is what I got. This is how I got ripped off. And I'm, I'm just glad uh, some young kid didn't get ripped off. But kids, this is what you need to be aware for. Okay? I get these cards out of the envelope. First, this is not a premium insert, okay? He's got it in a top load, but this is nothing but a standard base card Dirk Jeter. This is from 2009 Tops. Okay? Just a standard base card. Now, I don't care what it books for. I'm going to be honest with you. I know a couple of guys right down the road here runs a card shop. Board. Uh, I mean, uh, Bob down here sells cards. I mean, just like this right here, he's got 5,000 count box sitting on the counter, and, it's, and he puts cards like this in them, and kids come in, quarter a card, quarter a piece all day long, you know, for the young kids. Because it's not like it's a card worth enough that you're going to take and send it in to get it graded, okay? Here is, if you can call it an insert, his so-called premium insert, I guess. I'm a supposing this is the only insert, really, that I consider an insert in here. So-called premium insert. Another card, dime a dozen, that um, I could go right down the road here. Take any kid all day long to Bob's Sports Shop down here, and you could get these for a quarter piece out of this, you know, box. He, he puts a lot of cards that are like... Booking for three bucks or less in the quarter bin. Okay. <sighs> Junk. Right. But I'm only spending a couple of bucks. I expected. I didn't really care about these other cards. Because I know he'd give me, you know. He would probably give me about a buck a card. For most, most cheater stuff. But um, this right here, another just basic base card. This one is, um, uh, I think, 2009 tops. 2010 tops and one. Just a basic dirt cheater card, nothing special. And here's the revealing. See, before, in his picture, all I could see was this right here, those two cards. What was a two card tops dirt cheater rookie card lot? I could see the top of that, but when you take this and look at this, kids, this is how I screwed me on the first one. Okay? This is not. A 1993 Topps Dirk Jeter rookie. This is like a something like a remake by Topps made in about 2006. Okay, that's not even what this is what the original Dirk Jeter rookie looked like. Okay, this is not Dirk Jeter rookie. This is like this is just common box fodder as far as I'm concerned. Okay. To a Dirk Jeter fan, it might be a buck card or whatever. But to me, it's common box fodder. Just like this. Now, you might be looking at this if you're inexperienced and say, what's the difference? That's, I mean, that is a legitimate 93 tops Dirk Jeter rookie card. No, it's not. Look at the back. More fodder. More remake common insert. Fodder. All these cars together. I got down here at Bob's shop. If he had all these cards laying in a, in, around, he would sell them to me for like a buck. There is no 1993 Tops Dirk Jeter rookie card. And this guy, you know, I messaged this guy after I opened this package up. He messaged me back and said, I got two Dirk Jeter rookies. This is not 1993 Dirk Jeter rookies. It might say 92 draft pick, but any anybody's been collecting cards for the last 20 years knows 
knows. And when you list something like that in an auction, you know you're trying to screw some kid over. I'm just glad that I bid on it and won it for a dollar twenty-six instead of some kid wasting his dollar nineteen on that crap, thinking he was going to actually get two Dirt Jeter rookie cards to add to his collection. Like I said, I'm not out much money. It's no big deal, and I can I probably won't lose but a buck. I'll I'll probably throw these to the side, and when I get something else decent a Dirt Jeter that I'm willing to to move, um, I can sell them to a uh, that guy in a group, maybe even sell them to somebody else in a lot of Yankee stuff. But at any rate, it just pisses me off. If you're going to advertise something and you're going to put it in a title, you know, and you're going to – he put it in an item description. Put real pictures and make sure you send out what you're advertising, okay? This guy's getting extremely negative feedback. I can tell you that right there. Also, he could make a quick, what, dollar off of a little bitty lot like this? Dollar twenty-six. <laughs> Costed him 50 cents to ship this to me. And he put a little note in here thanking me for my purchase. Yeah, now he's telling, he's telling me that he gave me exactly what the, the item description said. No, I, <laughs> he actually had the card number listed, okay? And I hate to tell him, but um, these cards here, there is, it, yeah, it does say 98. He, he said it said number 98 on the back when he messaged me back. It does say 98, number 98. But you got to realize this is not the original. And he was putting this auction out there like there was two original Dirt Jeter Tops rookies. Kids, just beware because there's a lot of guys out there on eBay selling. Men and women, for that matter, that will lie to you in a heartbeat to get a buck or two out of a card that ain't worth but a nickel. Okay. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry to be so long-winded. I was just really pissed off about this because this guy was, was blatantly lying. And it's a dealer like this, if he would lie about a, car, a, a lot that ain't but a dollar and something, then you know that that's the same kind of dealer that's going to lie about an autograph, lie about game use memorabilia if this guy is trying to screw somebody out of a dollar then you know he's going to list something else on there sooner or later and try to screw somebody out of a hundred that's my point kids beware okay look for if you see an item that doesn't have but one picture ask for more pictures if you see an item that doesn't have any detail in the description and trust me a lot of these pathetic sellers on ebay don't put any details and then they ignore you when you message them Find you some sellers that will answer your questions, that are polite and friendly. Those are the ones that really want to sell. They're, they're also usually the ones that will go out of their way to make their customers happy because they want you to come back and shop on their eBay store again in the future. Okay? When you find those, those are the ones you stick with. Okay? But, you know, beware of sellers that do this crap right here. And if you ever get screwed over, yeah, you can leave them negative feedback, but write that name down and make sure you don't get screwed over again in the future by the same seller. Thank you for watching. Hope everybody has a great day. Watch out for eBay jerks.